Okay, thanks, Mark. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to talk about um, our coastal mapping program, some of the applications, and I'll, I'll focus a bit on the, on the specifics of coastal cliffs and, and our cobble research. Um, so first, let's talk about how we measure coastal change. Um, these are our sort of traditional GPS-based tools. So we have ATV, uh, a dolly, and a jet ski. Um, these are typically used to collect transects uh, along our coastline of, of the sandy areas and, and offshore. Uh, some of our newer tools are LIDAR. Uh, so we have LIDAR that is mounted on a truck. We also have LIDAR that goes on a drone and we have drones that collect um, photogrammetric information as well. And these new tools provide a whole new suite of information that, that we're now using to study the coastline. If you haven't seen LIDAR data before, this is uh, an example of a LIDAR point cloud in Torrey Pines, and just showing you the, the detail that we're able to now map the coastline out with. Uh, right now it's, it's colored by elevation, but again, we are also collecting uh, photos that we're able to drape on top of those point clouds. And that's going to provide a whole nother uh, level of information that we're able to use to, to study our coastline with. What's really nice about these new tools is they're allowing us to, to study all these different parts of, of the coastal system. So in the past, we were primarily focused on the sand, but our coastline consists of also bedrock, reefs, cobble, engineering structures, and, and coastal cliffs and bluffs. And all of these features interact in the coastal system. So now being able to map them out together is really providing a really nice way to, to um, start to understand the coastline better. So where do we survey? So in, in South County, our survey started in, this is in San Diego, and started in 2008. Um, and they've slowly expanded over time. So right now we survey from about the Tijuana River up to Coronado every month. So this is a, a 20 kilometer section. This covers portions of Borderfield State Park as well as Silver Strand State Beach. In Northern San Diego County, our survey started in 2001 in, in Torrey Pines. We have a really great data set in Torrey Pines. And these also have slowly increased in, in space and time. Over, and currently we, we survey the southern half of this region, so about 20 kilometers um, every month. And then we survey the entire section from, from La Jolla all the way up to Oceanside, uh, probably about two or three times a year. And this covers um, seven different state parks uh, shown, shown here on the right hand side. So those are, those are our regularly scheduled surveys, but we also do rapid response surveys. For example, we had a significant storm event here in, um, in late January. And so with our tools, we were able to, to get out to the, the two primary survey sections that we have. So both in South County and, and in North County and survey those 20 kilometer sections. Um, and this is a really nice, uh, tools to be able to have to do this. Um, this is a really nice data point, uh, trying to understand the storm response of, of our coastline. And what we see here is we had the significant event here where we lost a lot of sand and we were eroded all the way down to bedrock and, and cobble in a lot of locations. This is really important to sort of document, again, these sort of stream conditions to, to these large wave events that occur. The other rapid response surveys that we do are, are in response to, to large landslides. Uh, these are a couple that we've had here um, in Torrey Pines and the Blacks area over, over the last couple of years. And it's important to, to map, map these out relatively quickly be, before they get washed away so we can know how far out uh, this material ran out on, onto the beach. So if we, this figure here shows the, um, you know, where we've been surveying in time. So the horizontal axis here is time, the vertical axis is uh, location in, in San Diego County. The, the blue areas over here, these are the um, locations of the state parks in San Diego. And all of these green areas here are LIDAR surveys that we've done. Um, so in 2017 was primarily just testing and then we've slowly increased over time. 
in space. And we're currently serving about 50 to 100 days per year, um, collecting about 1,000 kilometers per year in San Diego County. The other thing we're, we're doing with this data is, is building out a larger database for San Diego County. So incorporating other surveys that have been done in the past. So this is a similar plot here, but now we're going back to over the last 20 years and incorporating different types of surveys. For example, those GPS based surveys that we did in the past, as well as airborne LIDAR surveys. Um, and sort of the, sort of the, the yellowish here uh, surveys, these are the, the LIDAR and photogrammetric surveys that we've done. But again, building out this database, so we can start to look at a regional picture and, um, and make everything consistent with all this data that, 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 that's available within San Diego. Um, more recently, we have started to expand our surveys outside of, of the San Diego region. We recently did a couple surveys in the Monterey Bay area at, at Twin Lakes and Pajaro River and Carmel River mouth, as well as um, some recent work in, in Malibu Lagoon and, and Point Doom, and these will also be in the process of being incorporated into our, our survey database. Um, <clears throat> so we jump back to, to San Diego County, um, and this plot here shows the, the beach width. Um, and this is one of the, the primary products of, of these surveys is, is looking at the beach changes. So all, um, and this is a space time graph and all the areas in red here are areas where we have very narrow beaches and blue are, are wider beaches. So this generating this, this sort of a larger regional data set and, and beach change allows us to look at the comprehensive picture of what's going on our, on, on our coastline in San Diego. And particularly I wanna point out this region here in the, re in the recent years, and this is the Torrey Pine area, we've really been collecting a lot of data. So we're just starting to sort of get into this. And what's nice about, again, um, this data set is we can look at the regional picture and start to look at how sand may or may not be exchanging, exchanging between different beaches and moving along shore. This figure shows the uh, beach change uh, in Northern Torrey Pines just over a three or three week time period. And uh, the areas in blue are areas that have accreted, the areas in red are areas that have eroded. And what I wanna point out is that um, it's not as if the beaches are always doing one thing or another. It can be very complex patterns where the beaches are eroding and accreting in different places at the same time. And that's what's allowing these new tools for allowing us to study these types of patterns that typically we weren't able um, to map out in, in the past. So again, providing a whole suite of new information that's helping us to understand the coastline even better. Um, cobble is also another thing that we're now able to get a better handle on our coastline. This is Northern Torrey Pines, um, where we do have extensive, extensive cobble exposure sometimes in, in the wintertime. And I'll be talking a little bit more about cobble in a minute, so I'll skip over this. Um, bedrock is also something that we're now starting to be able to map out in detail with these new surveys. So this is the top right hand side here is San Alijo State Beach where we can see significant bedrock exposure. And we can see this in the LIDAR data, which is great. So starting to develop a regional picture of where that bedrock elevation is. And this is important because um, our beaches, underneath of our beaches, the beaches are really just a thin layer of sand over our bedrock in many places. And if we can map out where that bedrock is, then that can help us improve beach erosion models because we know how far the beaches can erode because that bedrock really is the boundary of part, how far they can erode. The other thing that we can use with this sort of data is to, uh, once we know where that bedrock level is, then we can um, calculate exactly how much sediment we have in within the coastal system. And one of the other primary products um, that we can do with this, this is where a lot of my research lies is in, is in cliff erosion studies. And I'll just talk about one that I briefly finished. Um, and that was a study uh, recently did in Del Mar and Torrey Pines. So this is a, a three-year study where we collected weekly LIDAR data along this section. We also had um, these uh, sensors here shown here on the bottom right. Uh, these are buried, were buried at the bottom of the cliff. And what they do is they measure how big the waves are when, the, when they impact the cliff. Um, and so, as far as I know, this is, this is again, one of the most detailed studies I think that was ever conducted over an extended cliff site. 
one of the main purposes of this study was really to, to quantify the relationships that are eroding the cliff. And we know that waves in both rainfall and groundwater are important in eroding our coastline and our cliffs. However, um, the wave driven processes on the cliffs have never really been quantified with field observations. And that was really the purpose of this study. So if we can quantify this relationship, that will allow us to build much better models and forecasts of, forecasts of, of future cliff erosion. Uh, so during this time period, there were uh, several large landslides as shown here in these pictures. Many of them were, were documented um, in the press. There was one on the top right hand side here that was almost landed on someone. This is someone on the beach. On the bottom here is an event where uh, rainfall was, was running over the top of the cliffs um, and eroded the cliff almost all the way back to the tracks. This event, as well as several others during this time period, caused the, the railway have to be closed and inspected. And this is extremely disruptive to the San Diego region when, when this happens. Um, so it's important, again, that we try to understand these processes so we can help, help mitigate them. So now the press reported on probably about five to 10 of these different landslides occurring during this time period. But with these weekly LIDAR surveys, I was actually able to detect over 4,000 different landslides during this three year time period. And that's what's shown here, just over a one year, one week time period where all of these areas in red are, are individual landslides for during a one week period that, that I was able to, to detect. So if we look at the the time series of what happened over these three years. The, the top panel is the waves impacting the cliffs, the center panel. Uh, the blue is the, the daily rainfall. The orange is the cumulative seasonal rainfall and the bottom panel here is the amount of erosion. And just what I wanna point out is that the, the increased erosion happened in the winters of 2018 and 1920. And this did correspond with periods of elevated rainfall um, as well as wave action. This is what we expect, given that we know those are the, the primary processes acting on our cliffs. However, these, these are sort of, again, this is seasonal information. And what we really need to do is we want to look at the, the weekly data so we can get a better handle on how these different processes are, are acting on the cliff. And that's what's um, this plot shows here, which is quite interesting. So on the, hor on the vertical axis is the, the cliff elevation. On the horizontal axis is the correlation with erosion. And if we look at the weekly time series and we look at how different, different factors, the erosional factors are impacting the cliff at different elevations, the blue line here is the correlation of rainfall and erosion. And you can see that the correlation is, is high, but it's only in the mid to upper cliff. So the rainfall seems to be acting higher up on the cliff as opposed to these other lines, um, which are, are um, various wave impact metrics. And you can see that they're correlated with the amount of erosion, but only in a very specific band in, in the lower part of the cliff. So what we see is that both of these processes are important, but appear to be acting on the cliff um, at different parts of the cliff. And essentially what's happening is the waves are eroding the bottom of the cliff, causing cliff instability, and then allowing the rainfall and groundwater processes to cause larger upper bluff failures. And again, this lower um, wave driven erosion is not a process that has been previously quantified. And so this is really nice and will allow us to improve um, cliff erosion models. Now, because we were um, at the site so frequently, we actually were able to capture one of these landslides in action. Um, so that's what's shown here. What you'll start to see is um, you'll see several smaller landslides occur before the main event. And so what I want to point out is that the landslides typically are not a singular event. Um, you'll have smaller, uh, smaller landslides occur. This will cause destabilization around other parts of the cliff, and then you'll have the main part of the landslide come down as shown here. And then you'll also have the same thing happen after the major cliff failure. So essentially you can think of these failures similar to an earthquakes where it's a series of foreshocks, um, the main event, and then aftershocks as well. 
And we saw the same sort of patterns happening within the weekly LIDAR data where we had large landslides occur in one particular location. That stress was then transferred to adjacent locations and caused uh, additional erosion. So you had repeated erosion um, tending to form cliff erosion hotspots um, as well as in, in that, in that uh, three-year time series. So I just want to show you a, uh, a cliff. This is a, a statewide um, cliff retreat viewer that currently um, is, is in development. Um, but essentially taking some of the studies that I've done and putting them online, making them um, easy to read for, for coastal managers to kind of understand what's happening along our coastline. Um, so each one of these dots is, is representing cliff retreat in a particular region. So the, the darker areas are areas with, with more cliff retreat. And as you zoom in, um, you can get more detail. And again, so this is along the, the entire state. Um, again, the, the darker areas are areas of, of more cliff retreat. And this is retreat rates between 2010 and 2016. So I have several other studies that uh, I've done statewide like this. And so we'll start to build out this database um, with, with the other information and then hopefully make it public and make it a useful tool for, for various coastal managers. One of the other things I've been working on is developing uh, detailed erosion maps for several of the, um, the state parks within San Diego County. So this is South Carlsbad uh, State Beach and all of these areas in red here. The deeper reds are significant erosion uh, along the coastline. This is the campground here, the various campsites on the cliff top. Um, and then the bottom panel here is the corresponding amount of, of retreat over, over the last 20 years. So one of my deliverables for this year is, is to generate these types of maps uh, for several of the, of the state parks uh, within San Diego County. So you can, you can expect those within the next few months. Um, next, I'll talk a little bit about Cobble. Um, uh, I think this is a picture I think that uh, Darren Smith, who I believe is on the line, actually took. And it, I think it's a really interesting picture. This is a, you know, some tours on the, on the beach here, probably expecting a nice sandy beach. However, uh, this is South Carlsbad State Beach where we've had a significant amount of cobble on our beaches over the last few years. And it's something that's not really well studied in the past, but we're starting to make more of an effort to try to understand um, how cobble influences our beaches. Um, and in, in some places I show in this picture, you know, the cobble is the entirety of the beach. So it's something we were really trying to make a better effort of, of trying to understand how it's affecting our coastline. The other interesting thing about cobble is that people are starting to use it um, to, as a method of shore protection. Now this is, uh, again, South Carlsbad State Beach, um, where there's an eroding uh, access way here. And, and Darren Smith, again, has been using cobble as a natural shoreline protection uh, method here. This is natural, this lower section here as using what's naturally occurring and trying to use it um, to protect the shoreline in, the, in this area. And so we've been monitoring this, um, working with Darren over the last few years. The initial construction was 2017 and it's been um, restacked a few times as the cobble has been uh, knocked down. But these are the annual profiles uh, across the, the, this uh, section. So the, the blue line here is the initial profile before the cobble was put in place. You can see the, this is the access ramp here. It used to be about uh, six feet wide or so. And the cobble, these are the cobble uh, piles that have been placed to try to protect this area. Unfortunately, this, this green line here is, is the most recent survey we did. And you can see that even though this cobble has been in place, it has still continued to erode. So what we think is happening is that um, while this cobble may be pr protecting the wave, stopping the waves from hitting the cliff, there's actually a fair amount of, of water that's running down this pathway and is concentrated into this area and jumps over the cliff and erodes this area and is causing the erosion. So this points out, sort of highlights some of the, the um, 
the information we're, we're getting from doing these surveys um, and trying to understand the different processes that, that are impacting our coastline. I'll also like to point out that this zone down here is the area where we have a very extensive natural cobble berm in southern uh, Carlsbad State Beach and the blue line in 2017. This green line again is the most recent. So it's actually the natural cobble berm is created um, a couple of feet in this area. And this is an area um, we'll be continuing to monitoring. It's, and it's a quite interesting spot to, uh, on our coastline where, again, we have a very extensive cobble berm. Um, and it's primarily located in the, in the southern section of Carlsbad, South Carlsbad State Beach, which is this whole section here. Here's a picture of the berm at the bottom of the cliff. And when I look at the, um, the amount of cliff retreat as shown here on the, uh, the bottom panel, what we have is that this, the area where we have this cobble, this extensive cobble berm is the same area where we're seeing the lowest amounts of cliff retreat over the last 20 years. So I'm interested to sort of um, study this in more detail and try to understand how effective this particular natural berm has been at uh, helping to prevent the erosion of, of this portion of the campground and can that be replicated for other areas. One of the other tools that, uh, that uh, Hiro Matsumoto has developed is using the LIDAR data. He's developed some automated cobble detection methods using machine learning um, to map out where, where cobbles are on the surface of our beaches and, and being able to quantify that in high detail. Um, and so on the right-hand side here, this is Torrey Pines State Beach. Uh, the red line is the, the, the horizontal axis is the longshore location, the vertical axis is cobble coverage. So again, just it's showing a very dynamic situation um, where we have in November of this 2018, we essentially have no cobble showing at all. And then just a month later, you can see extensive cobble exposures um, along our coastline. So this is a new tool that we have that we're using to map out cobble across Northern San Diego County and look at how it's influencing our beaches. But those surveys really only tell us where cobble exists on, on the surface for a particular time period. It doesn't tell us how the cobble is actually moving around. So about a year ago, we started a, an RFID cobble tracking study where we inserted small RFID tags into about 350 cobbles and released them at, at Torrey Pines Beach. And then we tracked them with this ATV, which is outfitted with a, um, an antenna array, which can detect exactly where cobbles are. So we can map out and track where individual cobbles are, are moving. Now this uh, is gonna show an animation here of, of, of what we've noticed so far. Each one of these red dots is an individual cobble and there were two deployments. So the red deployment is our first deployment, which was scattered across the beach face. The second deployment uh, there are gonna be uh, blue dots, which will, which will show up here in time. And that was our second deployment on the right-hand side here is, is the wave height over about a year that we've been mon monitoring um, the cobbles. Uh, and so this animation again shows how they've been moving over time. So Initially, we saw um, cobbles moving both on and offshore. We did see some patterns where they tend to move onshore and then get stuck in the back of the beach. This is when the, the berm was, was sort of building up. But then one of the interesting things here is that we start to see you know, very complex patterns about where these cobbles are going. It's not as if they're moving in the same direction. Some of these are moving significantly along shore. And now we're getting towards our summer months where we have sand building up and starting to cover up the cobbles. And over the last few months, they have, they have really remained just in the back of the beach as far as where we're detecting them. But there are likely very, you know, you saw those other cobbles that are located in this area, but they were buried by the sand. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens this winter as these sands erode and we can start to detect those additional cobbles. So this is an ongoing study. Uh, lastly, I just want to show you another um, online viewer that, that's in development. This is a, a poetry viewer um, where you can 
access our, our point clouds and look at the data in detail. So this will be online that we're hoping to make available to you guys. Um, so you can inspect our data um, and really, you know, if you want to, you can make, you can make measurements on this data of various things. Um, you can also, you can take profiles across various segments. Um, uh, let's see, here's a profile. So this is some of the tools that that we're going to make available to you guys. Um, again, this is just toy plans. There's a bunch of different tools you can have, but I think this could be helpful for some of those vulnerability studies that, that are being worked on and how you can actually interact and make measurements um, with, with these data sets that, that we've been collecting. So in summary, I talked about some of our our coastal mapping program, some of the tools that we have and how we're building out a, an extensive database within San Diego County. I talked about uh, how we're using this to measure detailed changes on our coastline and some of the complex interactions with different coastal features on our coastline, as well as some of the new online viewers that we have to um, and interact with, with, with the data that we've been collecting. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to take questions if there is time. Thank you, Adam. Open it up for questions. I will say that Adam's probably the most sought after public speaker at Scripps. He's constantly uh, dealing with outreach concerns. Um, I have a quick question. Yes, Darren. Um, actually, not a quick question. It's probably a complicated one, but you know, looking at at your your data and some of the bluff erosion stuff, is some something that's kind of coming more clear is that a lot of our problems are our freshwater, you know, storm runoff problems. And um, we've always I've been real focused on the ocean as far as sea level rise and some of our problems, and and that one seems a little harder to control than the stormwater parts of it. So. So maybe that's something we can kind of start thinking about changing our focus to for, for some of these places. Yeah, it's a, that's a good comment. I think that definitely there are, are definitely localized areas where the storm runoff is, is a significant factor, like, for example, at, at that ramp, but also some of those, um, you know, those, those drainage pipes that come down in San Alijo where you have concentrated rain being, being dumped onto the cliff, which, you know, is not probably not a helping situation, but those are things that, yeah, you're right that you know it could be tackled maybe easier than trying to you know control the ocean in a way so it's a good point 